2024 NFL Draft is in the books. Imagine taking a shot every time you heard that, which means now it is time to look at the UDFAs, undrafted free agents, your Atlanta Falcons signed. Now, let me open up by saying this is a very fluid list. Guys will get added. You'll see some invites later on. You'll see some practice, uh, some mini camp invites. So just roll with the punches as this list continues to grow. But quick reminder to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I know that a lot of people are going to take their foot off the gas now that the NFL draft is over, but we're not going to. So if you're looking for a Falcons YouTube channel all summer and spring long, hit the sub button down below. Help us reach our next milestone of 22,000 subscribers. First UDFA we're going to look at is John Paddock, quarterback out of Illinois. Now, six foot, uh, 5'11", 193 pounds. He was an honorable mention All-Big Ten player last year. Started two years for the Fighting Illini. Opened up his career at Ball State. And last year for Illinois, he threw nine touchdowns in seven games. Of course, he joins a very competitive quarterback room with Michael Penix recently inserted into it. But if Taylor Heineke is not looking the part in training camp and John Paddock comes out of nowhere... That could be a potential battle for QB3, so that would be one to keep an eye on, although it's definitely a long shot. Next UDFA comes from Southern Utah. It is wide receiver Isaiah Wooden, 5'7", 176 pounds, started his career off at Kent State, then he trans transfers to Southern Utah. We've seen a couple of like Utah collegiate athletes come to the Falcons, Tyler Algier, Clark Phillips, so... Whoever's doing the scouting for the Falcons in Utah is doing a pretty good job so far. He had 20 career touchdowns for the Thunderbirds. The wide receiver room in Atlanta, I would say if you were power ranking UDFA wide receiver destinations, the Falcons would be towards the top of the list. You've got roster locks in Drake London, Darnell Mooney, and Rondell Moore, Ray Ray McLeod for special teams, uh, Casey Washington, who they just drafted out of Illinois, but... Like, Kaderil Hodge, I don't think, is an absolute lock to make the roster. So you could see a UDFA push for a 53-man roster spot, especially with a new offense that features a lot of three wide receiver sets. The Falcons may want to bring an extra wide receiver on board compared to previous years. Another wide receiver who was invited to be a UDFA, that is Jaquay Jackson from Rutgers. Six foot one, 183 pounds. He started his career off playing Juco at California PA. Then he spends one year with the Scarlet Knights, 361 yards and one touchdown. And, well, I'll say the spiel I just gave about the wide receiver position for UDFAs. Maybe keep an eye on one of these two UDFA wide receivers to contend for a 53-man roster spot. Now, before we look at the other UDFA signings the Falcons made, I do want to fill everyone in on our wonderful sponsor today, which is Game Time. If you're trying to go catch a Braves game, a playoff basketball or hockey game, or any other sporting event in your local area, download the Game Time app today and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. An awesome feature that Game Time has is the all-in price option right from the jump. That way you don't spend like 20 minutes going through the checkout process just to find out that with fees and taxes, the price doubled. With Game Time, they are up front at the get-go. So get started today. Uh, Game Time has an awesome deal for all of our viewers, like I mentioned. $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, but use code CHATSPORTS, C-H-A-T, SPORTS, for $20 off. I've put all that information in the comments and description of today's video. Shout out to Game Time for supporting us here at Chat Sports. Number four, UDFA, the Falcons signed. It is offensive tackle from Richmond, Ryan Cole. Uh, third team All American in the FCS last year. Six foot five, 308 pounds. He was dominant in the Colonial League. And I would say on the offensive line that. There could be some pushing to be had for that six-man roster spot. I think Storm Norton filled in quite admirably last year when he had to for Jake Matthews and Caleb McGarry, but maybe Vrabel or another tackle that's competing for one of the last roster spots could have a spot taken by a UDFA since the Falcons did not draft an offensive tackle. Fifth guy up is Jaden Price, cornerback from North Dakota State. He got a $10,000 signing bonus, so 
I think there's some level of interest for the Falcons in price. 5'11", 185 pounds. He was an All-American return man, three-time national champion. So with the new special teams rules in place, not a bad idea to try and invest in some guys who are experts in kick and putt returns. Now, he's going to compete for a spot in the cornerback room, but I think if he makes the roster, it won't be because of his defense. It'll be because of his special teams upside. Speaking of special teams upside, this next guy is definitely mastering in that. It is Trey Vival, cornerback from Minnesota State, Man Manicota. Manicota? I don't think I got that right. Uh, definitely a kickoff return specialist, though. In fact, fun fact, he scored on his last college kick return for a 79-yard touchdown. So talk about going out on top. 5'10", 173 pounds, not necessarily the desired size for an NFL corner, but the Falcons did not draft a cornerback, so this could be some positions where you see a UDFA sneak onto the roster. Speaking of a UDFA making the 53-man roster, do you think it's going to happen? It's definitely the toughest uphill battle. You can go watch uh, Kurt Warner's movie. He talks all about it uh, in great detail. So let me know. Yes or no, will a UDFA make their roster? The seventh UDFA that's been reported so far is punter from Texas, Ryan Sanborn. What do we have on him? He's the only Texas-eligible player to not be drafted. By the way, like Texas had a lot of players drafted. Did not expect them to, I think, have the most. Right, Them in Michigan were at the top. Someone can fact check me. Started off at Stanford, so super smart. Uh, played four seasons before transferring down to Austin, where I'm sure he had more fun in that one year living in Austin and then all four years in Palo Alto. Um, of course, the, the Falcons have a punter in Bradley Pinion, so I'm not quite sure if this is them just poking the nest a little bit to see if they can improve their punting altogether. But UDFA, Ryan Sanborn. They also had one more, not a UDFA, but a rookie minicamp invite. It is Virginia's track star, Cole Beck. I think this is just an athlete, like in college you see this, where they don't know exactly where they're going to put him, but they at least want to get a, unite, like a unanimous track star on their field to see if with pads on they can find a spot for him. But here are the Falcons' UDFA so far. Just seven Atlanta, by my count, um, had how many roster spots taken going into the draft? They had 71 spots occupied. They drafted eight players, so that puts them up to 79. Then they just signed seven players, so that puts them up to 86. So they could theoretically, if my math is checking out, sign four more UDFAs. So keep an eye on a couple more names to come down the pipeline over the next 48 hours or so. And as they trickle in, we'll be sure to keep you guys up to speed. But that's going to do it for us on our show today. I really, really appreciate everyone that hung out with us all four days, pretty much the NFL draft, including today. It's been an absolute whirlwind. I love the NFL draft. I love preparing for it. But we're not going anywhere. So do not check out for the next few weeks here. Come hang out with us every single day for more Falcons content.